Today we're going to be talking about recognizing resonance structures. And uh, all right, so last time we talked about the theory behind resonance. And in that discussion, I introduced the enolate of acetaldehyde as an example of a compound that exhibits resonance. So we can draw two Lewis structures for that compound. And what I said last time was that these two Lewis structures are actually two representations of the same thing. So in other words, the Lewis picture of electrons as localized into pairs and single bonds isn't really enough to tell us the whole story because the molecular orbitals of both of these compounds, both of these Lewis structures, are actually the same. So the real molecule is kind of like a hybrid of the resonance structures. So there's kind of like half a pi bond, if you will, between the carbon and the oxygen and the carbon and the carbon. And the negative charge is sort of spread out. There's kind of like a half negative on one carbon and a half negative on the oxygen there. The theory behind this has to do with the fact that the lone pair can interact with an orbital that's nearby. So orbital interactions, which we talked about already in the context of um, atomic orbitals, apply just as well to molecular orbitals and uh, are going to become important as we think about the reactivity of electrons in orbitals. So the idea is that there is an empty pi star orbital between, let's say, the two carbons, and if we place the lone pair on the oxygen, then we can imagine that interacting with the pi star orbital like so. That filled empty interaction, if we were to draw this on an energy diagram, would look like this. Whoops. And the end result would be a stabilization of the electrons and a destabilization of the antibonding MO, but since it's not filled, we don't have to worry about it. So, in fact, the real molecular orbitals of the enolate of acetaldehyde are these orbitals here that result from the interaction of what we would initially predict, which is, for instance, a P orbital on oxygen containing the lone pair and a simple pi star orbital here. And I showed the orbitals of acetaldehyde last time to sort of prove to you that they're more complicated than a simple lone pair next to a pi bond. So what we're going to talk about today is recognizing situations in which resonance structures are important. And you're going to want to be proficient at this because a lot of times one simple Lewis structure won't tell the whole story. So you need to be able to sort of interconvert in your mind between resonance structures and realize what resonance does to the reactivity of, for instance, a lone pair or a pi bond. And typically, it lowers it. So a lone pair involved in resonance will be lower in energy than one that's not. And that higher energy pair of electrons will tend to be more reactive. So for instance, just to give you a quick example here, you'll see more of this as we go. But a lone pair in an enamine such as this compound shown here, is going to be less reactive than a lone pair in a simple amine, such as, oh, I don't know, ethyl dimethylamine. This lone pair here will be more reactive because it's not involved in resonance delocalization. This one is. And because of that delocalization, we would expect that lone pair to be less reactive than one not involved in resonance. We'll see this again uh, through today's lecture as we talk about where resonance becomes important. All right, so when is resonance important? The most general thing you can say is that when electrons can delocalize, resonance is important. Electrons can delocalize in orbital terms when they're next to an empty orbital. So a very basic situation, let's take two carbons, one negative and one positive. The negative one, of course, would have to have a lone pair. The positive one, let's draw it sort of in this perspective. The positive one will have an empty orbital 
that plus, let me draw that a little bit better. There we go. That carbocation will have an empty orbital, empty p orbital, and now we have an empty orbital right next to a filled orbital. That interaction is sort of the essence of resonance. So what you're seeing here is actually one resonance structure of ethylene. Of course, we would never draw ethylene with that resonance structure unless we were in a very extreme situation because simply showing that interaction, which ends up being the pi bond, is sort of the way to go, right? Because we know the molecular orbitals of ethylene to involve that pi bonding um, situation. But as an extreme, you can imagine this is pretty much the simplest case of resonance you'll ever see. When it really becomes important is when the lone pair is in a high energy orbital and the empty orbital is lower, lower in energy. So you recall back in the day when we talked about resonance, uh, excuse me, when we talked about orbital energies, that the closer in energy two orbitals are, the stronger their interaction. So if we're taking a filled and an empty orbital and combining them together, we'll get a larger splitting the closer the orbitals are in energy. And we get the orbitals close in energy by involving high energy filled orbitals with low energy empty orbitals. That sort of squeezes their energies together and we get more stabilization out of the interaction. So as an example of this, going back to the enolate example, the negative uh, the electrons on the negatively charged oxygen are very high in energy. They want to get away from the other negatively charged electrons. And the pi star is a relatively um, low energy, uh, empty orbital, I should say. The pi star is a relatively low energy, empty orbital. And so this interaction in which we donate a lone pair into the pi star is quite favorable because we have a high energy filled orbital interacting with a low energy empty orbital to give us the resonance structure. And if you did this process in reverse, considering the carbocation, or excuse me, the, the carbanion with the lone pair on carbon, with the CO double bond pi antibonding orbital, you would get the same result. So this lone pair is very high in energy, and the carbonyl, as it's called, the CO double bond is the carbonyl group, um, pi star orbital is low in energy. Hence, going in the reverse direction is also favorable. So often when charges are involved, we see resonance becoming important because charges affect the energy of orbitals substantially, right? So electrons in, on a negatively charged atom will be substantially higher in energy, for instance, O minus, will be substantially higher in energy than electrons on a neutral atom such as in a carbonyl. So often when charges are involved and that charge is next to an empty orbital, you'll see resonance becoming important. And the last general thing we can say is that in molecules with pi bonds and lone pairs, resonance is really important. So in a molecule with pi bonds and lone pairs, these are typically going to be the most reactive filled orbitals and the most unreactive empty orbitals due to that typical ordering of energy levels that we've talked about before. So the sigmas will be the lowest and then the pi and then n, pi star, and sigma star. And typically we see these orbitals filled. So what you'll often see is that your most reactive filled orbitals will be those guys and your most react reactive empty orbitals will be the pi stars.